Okay, Ian. Okay, that's uh, great. Thanks for that. Blue Danube in in St. Asif, and why not? We've got Lynn to speak to. We've also got Jeff. Jeff. Hello, Ian. How are you? I'm all right, Jeff. Let's just check on the other cock-ups. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Other cock-ups? I'm not too bad. I'm Andrew. talking for him. Andrew? Will he shut up? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you'll you just, just hold on a second, Jeff. You're feeling quite safe and sound, are you? Andrew? Um, yes, yeah, sort of. <laughs> um, what sort of meant to I'm mean? no longer in the studio. I'm sat outside on the set eat again, just outside the door. And while you were talking to the last caller, I did try to call you. Obviously, you didn't hear me. No. Um, something just went bump in the studio. I don't know. It sounded something was knocked over, but... Go and have a look. I'm not... No, am I breaking up as well? Yeah. Oh. Go and have a look, stop being such a tart about it all. Um, okay, Jeff, sorry. Okay, in my story, uh, a few years ago, my ex-girlfriend, her mother used to teach Italian students down at a place called Holloway Sanatorium, which was an old stately home type of thing that Lord Holloway owned in Surrey. It was a guarded place, and uh, it was walled all around and... Just Control. Just hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, you're back with me, are you? Yeah. So I've got Pete Clements with me now. <laughs> oh, and you won't go in on your own. Yep, don't you worry. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, Jeff, I could hear him wailing. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so, right. Anyway, uh, she used to teach Italian students in the summer, and this place wasn't inhabited by anybody apart from security guards. So... Hello? Hi, oh, yeah, you're still with us. Yeah, I was asked to go and cut uh, some grass so they could play football on. So I'd hired a mower and I was cutting the grass. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this girl in a white dress, or white top and a long black dress. Yes. And I thought it was my girlfriend, Denise, trying to sneak up on me and jump out of the trees. So I was trying to be all macho and I marched up with my mower and she didn't jump out. So I went back down looked over the back of my shoulder and thought I saw her come back out of the trees. And being quite a sensible person, I thought, I'm going to keep calm because when she jumps out, I'm not going to move. I got back up there and I saw a girl walk straight through the trees. And uh, it put the fear of God into me because she actually walked through this covered walk that they got built of trees. So I ran back up to the outbuilding where the family were. And Denise was sitting there, all in blue, having a lunch. And I said, OK, I've seen you down there. Uh, how come you've changed so quickly? And she said, what you want a bed? And looked at me like we've got two heads. No looks. And I said, well, you were just down there, weren't you, by the, the covered walk, collecting flowers? And she said, you are. I said, now, come on, let's have it straight now. You were just down there while I was cutting the grass? She said, I wasn't. So I went back down to cut the grass, looked around, no one was there, picked my mouth back up and walked down, looked over my shoulder and I saw these girl, this girl again. Anyway, as I said, the place was guarded by security because it was a building that's worth six million pounds or something ridiculous. You wouldn't want anyone nicking it, would you? Certainly not. And I went back down to the security guards after and I said, excuse me, were there any people in here earlier? And the boat on the door said, no, of course not. Uh, I said, well, I've just seen a lady. He said, oh, was she collecting flowers? I said, yeah, that's right. He said, oh, yeah, we, we've uh, heard of her before. And uh, all I can suggest it was somebody else or another spirit or something. But, you know, really put the wind up me. And I've been cynical about this for years, but uh, it's always been with me since then. It's funny, isn't it? People are amazingly cynical and amazing non-believers until something happens one day. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I genuinely believe, I mean, to digress slightly, my father died in 1975, and he was always one of these guys that sort of pulled plugs out and turned lights off. And just after he died, I remember going to bed, and being the last one in the house, I went up to bed and I thought, oh, Christ, I haven't pulled the plug out, because my dad always used to go on about pulling the plugs out to televisions and things. And I knew I hadn't pulled it out. I went into the living room to pull the plug out, and there it was, out of the socket. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there's just no answer to that. Well, that's what I always say to people, Jeff, is you've got to make your own minds up about it. Thanks for that. Finally tonight, we've got Lynn. Lynn? Hiya. Hiya. I'm running, Hiya. Out, I'm running out of time very rapidly yeah. here. Yeah, very quickly. 
two places, one called Thornby Hall in Northampton, yeah. which used to be owned by the Wheel of Tobacco people. Um, I think it's rented out the house by the room there where I had a really weird experience. Well, listen, are you going to be? Get there. Are you going to be around Friday? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. We'll keep your number and we'll call you back on the free for all. Let's finally go and chat with the head of cock ups. Yes, it's all quieting down up here. I don't think there's anything up here at all. Nothing. No. Nope. You're completely convinced. Completely we convinced. There's no ghost in this building. What happened about that thing? Um. <laughs> well, uh, we can't say that anything has fallen over, but I, it may have been the double doors between each studio. It may have been. Um, Those are the ones you hear closing on their own sometimes. Yes. I right. think it, you know the air pressure and things just pulls the doors occasionally. I think it must have been that. I'm convinced. Okie dokie, thanks for that. Don't forget, the Malt, Malt House Iron Bridge, a week on Friday. See you there. Bye. The 1 o'clock news, this is Annie Webster.